Hi and welcome back to our free series of QGIS lessons. I'm Tim Aubrey from DMAD Marine Mammals Research Association. You've probably realised by now that these videos are filmed the night before. So it is Sunday night in the UK, which means it's Easter Sunday. So happy Easter to everybody. Today we're going to be looking at the final part of our creating data session. And we're going to be looking at creating polygon data and then just editing it with the attributes just like we have with the other data. So we'll dive straight in. Okay, before we begin today's lesson, a couple of apologies. The first is, sorry that this video is a little bit later than to normal. Um, I've had a bit of a nightmare with it, to be honest. The first time I recorded it, I somehow managed to delete it and all its contents. And then the second time I recorded it, it recorded without sound. So this is third time lucky. Also, apologies, this video is a little shorter than normal. It is a public holiday in the UK. But I did promise you a video every work day, every weekday, sorry. So here is the video anyway. So all I've done is so far is just like the other times I've opened up a Google satellite and I did that through the XYZ tiles in the browser layer. Um, and then just like before for the points and layers, we're going to have to create a layer to create polygon data. So we're going to go to layer, create layer, then new shape file layer. We're going to click the three dots. You can see I already have several files from the last couple of videos. So I'm going to call this land use three, third time lucky. And then for geometry type, we're going to choose polygon. Uh, in the name field, I'm just going to add one field, which is going to be land use this time. And I'm going to click add to fields list. I'm happy with text data and the length, so add to fields list and then click OK. And you'll see this pops up in our layers. So now what we want to do is we want to go up to a digitizing toolbar, which is the one with the yellow pencil. Uh, if you don't have it, just right click on any gray space, find digitizing toolbar. Um, let's zoom out a second. Oops. Sorry. Let's get my zoom settings right. For what I'm trying to show you. Okay, excellent. So we've got this, we found our digital, we made sure it's highlighted in the layers. We've clicked toggle editing, which is in the digitizing toolbar, and that illuminates several more options. One of which is the add polygon feature. So we're just going to click that and begin to add our polygon features. So the first feature I'm going to add is just this area of scrubland here. So I'm just adding it quite loosely because it's only an example. So I just click around. Obviously, the more points that I add, the more accurate that my shape's going to be. But that's really going to depend on the scale that you're working on. I'm probably not doing quite enough points for this sort of scale and map. And then I'm going to come back up along this track here. Okay. And then when I'm happy that I've completed my polygon as I want it, I can just right click. It's going to ask me for an ID, which I'll ask you for every time because every QGIS shapefile has to have an ID. So I'm just going to select one. And then for land use, I'm going to write scrub, scrub, and then press OK. Um, and I'm going to do the same for the beach here. So I'm just going to very loosely draw around the beach. Again, depending on what you're doing this for, you might want to do this in far more detail. I'm not going to worry too much about doing my trees as a separate area in this one. I showed you how you can model trees using just point data. Okay. So this is going to be ID2. I right click to finish that. And it's just going to be beach. And I'm going to press OK. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video to digitize a few more so you don't have to sit here and watch me digitize. Um, I'll be back in a couple of seconds. 
Okay, so I've added a couple more, uh, and what we're going to do, just like all the others, is we're going to click toggle editing again and click save changes to our layer. And then if we right click, we can go into open attribute table, and we can go through and see that we have a number of different options. Um, we can sort the ID by double clicking on ID, so it goes one, two, three, four, five, and we can sort the land use similarly by alphabetical order just by double clicking on land use. So you can see we've got a couple of areas of scrub and if we had more areas we'd be able to group those more accurately. Okay perfect what we're going to do now is right click again on our land use layer and click properties and where it says single symbol we're just going to change that to categorized. The value we're obviously going to select land use and then we're going to click classify and it will give us some different colors because we've just selected random color. Um, and we can go through and just change a couple of these to make them more representative. So I'm going to change this to a light gray. Scrub, I'm happy with being green. Seawall can also be a bit of a gray color. We'll make this one a bit darker. Okay. I'm happy for the sports complex to be in the purple colour. Um, the track I'm going to make a bit of a brown colour. So I'll see if I've got any ready saved that would be convenient. Uh, this colour here will do. Make it a bit more brown. Okay. And then the trees, I'll just make it green for obvious reasons. Okay, and then if I click apply, there you can see that we've very quickly just digitized, although it's been very basic, we've digitized our different areas. So we've got our sports complex in purple, our scrub in green, our trees in slightly darker green, a little track running through the complex, a path, a beach, and a seawall, all with very little effort. And we can turn our Google Satellite data off, and it's now displaying, although very coarsely because I've rushed it as I said, it's displaying the same data which was available to us on the Google Satellite, but massively simplified. The last thing I'm going to do is just add a background to my project, so I'm going to go Project Properties. And under background colour, I'm just going to make it light blue to represent that little area of C which we haven't made a polygon of. Okay, so now you can see we've got our C, our beach, our paths, our tracks, very quickly, very simply. And you might be wondering when am I ever going to have to use this sort of thing? Uh, but actually, it's creating polygons is something you'll do quite regularly in GIS, whether it's QGIS, ArcGIS, whatever. Um, we're going to need to do them when we sort of create survey areas to show the areas that we've surveyed in. Um, we're going to need to do it if we ever want to create protected areas, whether they've been, been marine protected areas or terrestrial protected areas. And quite often it can be useful if we're designing protected areas to be able to digitize various things so we can draw buffers around them. For example, we might want to digitize a reef uh, and then make a buffer around that reef for a protected area. Uh, similarly, if we had um, some forest and they wanted to use some quarry, um, they want to do some extraction, so like quarrying, then uh, we might want to make a buffer around the area of protected forest so that there was no risk of any forest getting damaged just by adding a buffer. So we do use polygons especially a lot in conservation biology. So I hope that was useful and I'll see you in the next lesson.